today on Atomic Answers. Let's get even more practice predicting the products of chemical reactions. Now, I trust you've watched the first video on it. So now maybe you should just pause the video and see how many you can work on your own. But let's go ahead and get started if you've already done that. So the first reaction here, we have a carbon fuel source. You may call it a hydrocarbon. And it's reacting with oxygen gas, O2. Again, remember your diatomics, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine, and some others. They're just going to exist in that manner in nature. You won't find oxygen by itself. Um, it'll either be bonded to another oxygen atom, as you see here, to be diatomic oxygen gas, or, of course, some other potentially metal. But this is going to be a combustion reaction. Again, a combustion reaction is where you have a carbon uh, fuel source, a hydrocarbon fuel source, it reacts with oxygen gas. These are the easiest reactions in the world because a combustion reaction always produces carbon dioxide gas plus water. Now, I'm not balancing in these videos. We're going to have a, a separate set of videos on that. We're just predicting the products today. So for any combustion reaction, CO2, H2O, nothing else needed. Pretty easy. So now we've got a reaction where you've got two compounds as reactants and so we can't just combine them together in a synthesis reaction because i mean hcl cacl what in the world would that be this is going to be a double replacement reaction now technically this could also be an acid base reaction but you're going to be working your acid base reactions just as you would your double replacement reactions for the purpose of finding products. But again, there's a video on acid-based reactions to clarify here in this playlist. So anytime you have a, a reaction, at least where you predict the products as if it were a double replacement reaction, two things. Number one, check for polyatomic ions. If we have any, put them in parentheses. And number two, underline either your acting metal in the hydrogen case here or the metal metal here in the uh, calcium's case. The acting metal upset some people me saying it that way. Um, but again, I remind you, when we study redox reactions, there are circumstances in which hydrogen can act as a metal. But even in this case, with it not acting as a metal and just being an acid where it donates the protons, you're going to not combine the H and the CA. And so you always underline, again, what's the metal or the acting metal in a double replacement reaction. And you do that because you can't combine again the two underlying things. So the only thing that the hydrogen can combine with on the other side is the carbonate, that polyatomic ion there. So that means only thing that the uh, calcium can combine with on the other side is your chlorine. Now we don't just blindly carry over subscripts or assume subscripts. We only carry over what's in the parentheses subscript wise for a polyatomic ion. Otherwise, subscripts are predicted using the cross charge rule if you've produced an ionic compound. And so in the case of HCO3, we need to have a subscript conversation. Yes, hydrogen uh, considered a group one metal for its charge plus one, but carbonate CO3 on your polyatomic ion sheet is a two minus charge. And so the charge of the CO3 polyatomic ion becomes the subscript on the hydrogen. We cross it down as you see like that. And the charge of the hydrogen is the subscript on your carbonate. So H2CO3. And the same with the calcium chloride. Calcium is in group two, so it has a two plus charge. Chlorine is in group seven with a minus one charge. The formula is Ca1 Cl2. So it produces H2CO3, hydrogen carbonate, and calcium chloride, CaCl2. Next is a pretty interesting reaction because we only have a single reactant. So the only thing that it can be is a decomposition reaction. Now, in my previous video, we had an example of a decomp reaction, but it said plus heat. So just realize it may not do that all the time. And again, there are multiple rules for decomp reactions. If you have a metal hydroxide, it decomposes into a metal oxide plus water. If you have a metal carbonate, it decomposes into a metal oxide and carbon dioxide gas. But we don't have either of those two here. We just have a metal oxide. 
And so in this situation, really, we're just going to split them apart. We're just going to form your silver metal and your oxygen gas. But realize, again, oxygen gas exists diatomically. So don't just say plus O, it's O2. That would screw up your balancing. It would screw up any stoichiometry. So don't forget your diatomics. And finally, we've got a single reactant, potassium, and another reactant that's a compound. And so we can't just combine it because if it were a combination or a synthesis reaction, you know, they would both be single reactants. So this is a single replacement or your teacher may call it single displacement reaction. We treat these similar to a double replacement. We check for polyatomic ions, put those in parentheses if we have them, so we know to carry that subscript that's associated with the polyatomic ion over. Otherwise, we just underline the metals, and that way we know that we can't combine those two things. And another way to identify a single replacement reaction is you have one thing by itself on the reactant side, but just know that you're going to be producing something different by itself on the product side. So you're doing a metal swap here. The, the magnesium is with the bromine, but now the potassium is going to be with it and the magnesium kind of gets kicked to the curve and now it's by itself. We produce the ionic product though, so we have to check it for subscripts with the cross charge rule. Potassium is in group one, so it's got a plus one charge and bromine is in group seven with a minus one charge. That's why I didn't carry the two over. It doesn't need it will compensate for the two magne or for the two bromine atoms when we balance this in the next video.